It's one of our ponds here and we feed them with this type of feed and they they are close to five months now. We stock them in the month of April. So we want to feed them and we want to see how they will respond to this feed. And one thing that we need to know when we want to feed them is you don't just put rush your feed, you test them. You see if they are active or not. So once you test them and they respond to feed them, you feed them properly. So I want to use this to test them if they are active. Just as you can see. Look how big this thing is. That's big. Our fingerlings. These are catfish fingerlings. These are flies. These are also uh, flies. These are flies. And then we have some of them. Eh? Hey. Yes. We have many of them here. Sure. Hi guys. I'm somewhere in Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria. And in today's video, we're touring a farm. Um, my name is Sunday Adebite and here we are currently at Search Farms Consort Limited here in Badagri, Lagos State and this farm is located on 10 acres of land. I mean, it has different units from the archery unit to the grow out to the processing unit to the sports center and also to the training center. Yes, and also this farm has uh, collaborated with a lot of organizations like IITA, MasterCard, to hold a training program for innovative youth. I mean, the MasterCard, IETA, WISH, and others, the World Initiative for Soil, Soil, and Human Health. So we are currently here at Search Farms Consult Limited here at Badagri, Lagos State. On the, on the average, like, how long does it take to raise a fish? Yes. From, uh, from the child? From to, the, exactly. To, to the you know, the, the we have different stages. We have the fries, the fingerlings, the juveniles, the jumbo. We have the melange, the table size, and the blue stock. Okay. So now, on the average, mm. when our feed are still feed, okay. I'm talking about the feed, the feed company now, yeah. when they are still producing the good our feed, now, it takes about three months. Three months. Three months to raise them to table size, three to four months mm. to table size. Okay. On, on the average, like, how the expenses like? When that, that three months? Uh, right, uh, the expenses right now, the cost of production is very, very high. Mm. I mean, we are getting feed as a very expensive rate. rate. Now, feed that we got last year for maybe like, let me just put it, let me like 18,000 is now doubled. That's a almost, almost 30, 40,000. Wow. So how do you guys cope with the whole thing? Uh, and, and make sales? Yes, we, we still produce because we don't have children and that's because we we are doing what we love. We are doing it with passion. Okay, aside from what you love, is this business uh, kind of uh, profitable? Yes, it's profitable. Okay. This business is profitable. How, how profitable? Yes, it's profitable in the sense that when you are when you have low cost of production okay. and then you have high input, I mean high output, IG, okay. then it's really profitable. Okay. But as it is right now, mm. we are we are spending a lot okay. on the cost of production, but we don't have markets. Don't have and market. this is general. It's not that we don't have markets in our farm. Of course, we, we see sales going on on the farm, yeah. but this is a general problem. And this is because when we tell them that, okay, this fish, we are selling at the rate of 4,000 naira per kg. Yeah. They will say, ah, it's too costly, they cannot buy it. Wow. Um, like, per kg? Per kg. Uh, how, how, many, how, how many fish most of make? make? Now, uh, it, it, it depends. It depends. If they are melange, three can make a kg, two can make a kg, but from, we, we can still get one. Per cage and even above cage, we have 1.5, 2.5. In fact, we have a particular fish on this farm that's weighing about 20 something kg. If just you, one single fish. fish. One kg. No, more than one kg, like 20 something kg. Is that fish alive? Is he's it? alive. He's, he's <laughs> at the archery. You can, know, can they, I see they've turned to grandpa, they don't come out. <laughs> <laughs> They don't come out on the regular basis like said, others. You said uh, you don't have markets. Like, what, what do you mean? Yes, it's not that we don't have markets. What I mean by that is that uh, people are not ready to pay for the actual price. You know, when you are doing a business, you need to do your cost of production mm -hmm. and then the profit After margin too. Inside, yeah. You have to put in everything. So when we accumulate everything together, it's like, let me give you, let me be practical right now. I will just give a random example. Okay. If you want to raise a kg of fish, yeah. If you spend 2,900 mm. to raise one kg, I mean, maybe when we get to the farm, say, when we get to the market, ah, this kg, this particular fish, it is 4,000 naira per kg. That means we are left with 1,100 naira profit. Next day, we say it's too expensive. They cannot buy more than 3,000 naira. 
Well, <coughs> I know you are, you are, you are actually the, the brain behind this farm, but as a representative of the farm, what was the vision behind this farm? Yes, the vision behind this farm is to bring in innovative youth, to bring in people together to do what we love and even to contribute our quota to food security you, and sustainability. And are you guys on the, like, how far have you guys come with, with the achievements? Uh, let okay. me say, let me say like my Oga, my boss, we always say it. Mm. We are not there yet, but we are on the track. Wow. We are on the track, but we are not there yet. So that, that is to say, everybody here, and they're just working for the sake of work. They love what they do. Exactly. Definitely. We love what we do. He's just a staff here and I'll get to ask more of <laughs> you love what, what, what they do. Yes. Okay. Let's explore the farm and see All right. <laughs> what's obtainable here in the farm. Bro, can you take me around? Yes. I can actually walk you around our farms. There are over 60 ponds here and we have several lot of ponds where we farm and cultivate our fish so into what, different what, sizes. What, what, what goes on? Take, uh, show, show us around. Yes. You can just follow through. Now this is one of the ponds and as you can see each pond has the name tag and it has the capacity. Now looking at that capacity now it's, uh, it's written that it can occupy 2500 pieces of fish at the same time. So now that means that this particular pond right now can occupy 2500 pieces. One like this. This one like this. But now I, I, I'm telling you that this, the total number of fish that are here are over 6000. At this particular pond? Yes. And that is because we are trying now. That 2,500 pieces is of table size. Okay. You have table size. You have melange. Okay. So table size is like one kg and above, oh. 900 gram okay. and above. Okay. So now, but we have melange, and the major reason why we have 6,000 pieces here is because we want to cultivate, we want to farm them, cultivate them into melange, like 400 gram, okay. 300 gram and above. Okay. So yeah. that is why we have 6,000 pieces here. Okay. So about here. Yes, this one. Uh, we have. Over 4,000 pieces, over 6,000 pieces here too, as well. 6,000 pieces? Yes, but some have been sold. We've sold some of them. Like, in fact, this is the, this is the biggest, this is part of the, let me say, part of the biggest pond here and that we have on, on the farm. Mm. Yes. So, we have, we have our canal here too. We have our canal here. So, uh, we have the outlet, the outlet where the water comes out from the pond. So, and then we have a canal that links everything together. Just as you can see right there, we have the outlet, this outlet, another outlet, this one outlet too. So, everything comes together here and they lead to a very big canal okay. at the end there. Okay. So, then we have our solar panel for lightning and for security purpose. Okay. And that's our gazebo too as well. Yeah, that's where we rest. So, is there any difference between the, the ponds? Yes, the, the only difference is the capacity. The capacity. Yes, the capacity because the capacity diff, the capacity differs. Now this particular point can occupy three thousand. Yes, and now this one can occupy two thousand six hundred. Two thousand six hundred. Two thousand six hundred. Okay. This, this one can occupy six thousand. Yes, six thousand pieces. This particular point. Six thousand pieces. Six thousand pieces. Yes. So the basic difference is just the capacity. Yes, it's the capacity. And also the another thing why the capacity is different is because of um, the reason why we are cultivating them now this one is just 2100 pieces okay so, so why the capacity like why, why, why do we have different capacity yeah it's because we are trying to maximize our land we are trying to maximize our space okay so we can have an e uh, uh, equally distributed uh, space okay. where we have different lots of um, ponds here and just as you can see right here we Sales is being going on right now. Okay, they're, they're, they're actually yes. buying. They are actually buying fish. They are here they to buy fish. Are. Yeah, sure. So now, this is the process of selling our fish, and we have different um, stages. We have the harvesting, the weighing, and the counting. As you can see right now, okay. they are counting the fish. They are sorting too. So why counting? We sort too as well. Okay. So we, we, you know, we have different sizes. We have the one of. 1 kg and above, we have one of below 1 kg, okay. we have one of 300, 600, 500 and above, 500 gram rather. So they are sorting and then they are counting and then they are weighing the fish, as you can see. So now, I, you know, I said something earlier about complete drainage. Okay. Now this is what actually happened here. Mm. This is total drainage. This is because they want to, they want uh, a complete harvest. And that's why we have to drain all the water out so that we can harvest get everything. harvest everything, get everything. So, we have the farm staffs here and the workers as well. As well. The archery units, we have three different sections too as well. Okay. We have the incubating room, 
we have nursery one and we have nursery two. And right now we are at the incubating room. Okay. So this is where we incubate our fish after stripping. So stripping is when the, we um when we strip eggs out of the female fish. Okay. So okay. that's a very long process. How do that? <laughs> so how we do that is we is what we, is a is a time that we call artificial breeding okay. or artificial feed seed propagation. So we do that by injecting the female fish with either the artificial hormone or the natural hormone. And part of examples of the um, artificial hormone is over time, over prime, and then the natural hormone, we have the pituitary gland okay. of a fish. Or we can even use the pituitary gland of human being too. <laughs> yes, in as much as it's alive. Yes, in as much the person is alive, oh. we can use it, yes. So we, can, so we, we inject it, we inject our female fish, and after eight to 12 hours, depending on the temperature, yeah. then they are ready to, the eggs are ready to be stripped. So they are ready to be stripped out. So once we strip them out... Are they, everything everything is, is, is done here? No, everything is not done here. This is the incubating room. Okay. So what we do is that we strip out the eggs okay. out of the female fish, okay. and then we spread the, uh, the meat the spam of a female fish is what we call meat okay. in, our, in our, our sector. So we spread the meat over the egg that has been collected from the female fish. Yeah. And then we bring them here inside the incubating room and we spread them into our incubating tanks. All oh. these tanks are incubating tanks. So we, while we are doing that, we make use of the um, spawning net, yeah. the suspender. Yeah. So, uh, so I want to see if there's anyone, like just to see a practical example, so we have a spawning net and then we have the suspender too. This is a typical example of a spawning tank that is ready for incubating. And as you can see inside, we have our suspender and we have our spawning net, or what you call kakaban. So after collecting the eggs from the female fish and mating with the sperm, um, or uh, mating with the sperm, yes, yeah, the, the sperm. So we now bring them inside here. Then we spread it evenly on this spawning net and after 24 hours you begin to see something tiny that begin to spring up right from this um spawning tank so this is how the incubating um process is being carried out and over here we have we have a lot of spawning tanks and we have some of our flies here you can come over to see some of our flies our fingerlings these are catfish fingerlings these are flies, these are also uh, flies. These are flies, and then we have some of them. Eh, hey. yes, we have many of them here. So, now, if you look at it very well, you have seen a bubble coming up from the water. That is the use of the aerator, and it's to supply enough oxygen for them inside this, this particular tank. So, now these are our ornamental fish species, like what we use at the aquarium. We have a lot of them. We have some, we have goldfish. We have goldfish here. We have goldfish. We have starfish too. Starfish is here. Then these are all the, also another of uh, flies. After the incubating room, the next is the nursery one section, and this is where we transport our um, freshly, let me say, um, freshly incubated flies. After a few weeks, then we transport them down here for proper monitoring and for proper treatment. So by that, we separate them into different tanks, into different tanks, because at times we might have up to 10,000 flies at a time. So. We separate them. We separate them into different tags for proper monitoring and for proper treatment. And we have a particular some of them here. So we have some here, and this is another um, another section. Another section. So now, just as you can see, look at him now. That's our farm manager. He's trying to bring in oxygen through the aerator inside the, the, the tanks. It's trying to supply oxygen to the, to the tanks. Okay. This host? Yes. With the host? Yes. 
They are. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the moment is on, it, it starts bringing in its bubbles. bubbles, like bringing bubbles. So with that, the oxygen have been supplied into the into the tanks. That, that's what we call the dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen. Yes. We have another one here too. So after the nostril one, we have the nostril two, and this is where we have a um, bigger size of fish. And you are seeing right now the tilapia species. You have the tilapia species, we have the pangasius. This is pangasius over there, and we have the knife fish over there too. So we have them inside this same tank. Okay. And we also have the red tilapia too as well. I'm seeing bigger fish and smaller fish, why? Yes, because they are of different sizes. They are, they, are, they are of different size. Those two fish over there, the bigger ones, the bigger ones, they are the knife fish, the male and the female. Why are they here? Like... So we just keep them for um, experiments. They okay. are trying to run out an experiment and that's why they have been kept here. And then we have, um, we have the tilapia, we have uh, the uh, red tilapia too. This particular one that is red in color. Yeah. Yes, we have it. We have it here too. So then we have we have bigger tanks, bigger collapsible tanks here to accommodate bigger fish. Yes, these are blue stocks. They are the parent stock of catfish. So this is what we use for reproduction. And we have one here too. I want to ask, how do you guys move the fish? Yes, we transport the fish in, uh, we, we put them inside the bath okay. with water. Okay. Because they need water. Okay. So we put them inside the bath with water and then we transport them from archery to, oh. the, to the pond. So that's how we transport them. And, and you see if... Yes, sure, definitely. Okay. Since our, our archery is not that really far okay. from, from, it's not far to, to this place, it's just so like a five minutes walk and then okay. we get them here. So we want to feed them, I want to see how they will respond to this feed. And one thing that we need to know when you want to feed them is you don't just put, rush your feed, you test them. You see if they are active or not. So once you test them and they respond to feed them, you feed them properly. So I want to use this to test them if they are active. Just as you can see. Now, ideally, they are not to be fed at this hour right now because the water surface is somehow hot, so it will, it will affect the way they respond to feed. For, because we've not fed them today and we are just feeding them for the first time, that's why they need to um, respond. But normally, we feed them early in the morning and late in the evening or when we have um, sunset. So inside this pond, there are 6,000 pieces of uh, catfish, Clarias galipinos. There are 6,000 pieces and they've been fed for the past five months. And the average weight is between 400 and above. We have some of them that make up to two pieces per kg. We have some that weigh up to three pieces per kg. And as you can see, there are different types of feeding actually, different methods. We have um, point feeding and we have broadcasting feeding. Now this one that I'm doing is called the point feeding. That means I'm just pulling out the feed to, for them on the spot. But where the broadcast is, you spread it across the surface area of the pond so that they can have equally distributed uh, feed for them to feed on. Um, looking at this pond now, we have different um, 
features of the pond and we have the inlets and we have inlets we have outlet and we have overflow now this one is the inlet for this pond now and what does the inlet mean it means it allows the inflow of water to the pond while the outlet allows the outflow of the water from the pond so the overflow is just to regulate the water level for instance if to avoid um, uh, flooding and to avoid uh, what's it called when the water is too much for the for uh, inside the pond and we want to let out some water we can there are two ways we have partial drainage and we have um total drainage the partial drainage is we we uh, release the water partially while the complete one is we drain the complete pond so now for that uh overflow now the water is coming in and at the same time the water is going out so that regulates two things it regulates the water level and also it regulates the oxygen level inside the pond so that is the major reason why we have overflow so that we won't have flooding so that to regulate the water level of uh, of the pond all right this particular pumping machine serves when we want to pump out our water as you have seen we actually drain all the water from this pond and this particular tarpaulin is used is connected with that pumping machine and is linked to this canal at that end here yeah, so as water is coming out from that pond is coming in we link down to this particular very end here yeah, where we have different types of, of where we have different types of aquatic plants so for example this water hyacinth now this particular plant you are seeing right here this particular plant this particular plant you are seeing right here is what we call water hyacinth now it helps in water purification so that means all the water that are coming out from the water from the pond they are leading to this canal and it leads to a very big canal at the end now the essence of this water hyacinth is it purifies our water and that's why we can see stay here that's why we can see because if not all this place would have been a messy area it would have been a like a very very messy environment but we have something that we use to purify our water which we are using water essence and that is the major reason why this aquatic plant is here and we also have another type of aquatic plant here at your back this is what we call duckweed lemna minor now this lemna minor it serves as supplementary feed for our fish now looking at the things of the 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 cost of our feed the cost of production right now is very very skyrocketing we are getting IFCR and we are paying so much for it. I mean, the meaning of FCR is when the, the total amount of energy conserved by your fish. Let me be practical now. If you want to attain a 1 kg fish, you need to feed that particular fish, maybe like 1.5 kg of feed to attain a 1 kg. That's the meaning of FCR. That means the energy, the feed you consume to get total like to get the average weight the average body weight but now we are getting ifcr that means instead of consuming an optimum range of 1.4 to 1.5 to 1 kg we are now getting 1.7 1.8 1.9 fcr that means for us to attain a 1 kg of fish we need to feed them almost 2 kg of feed that is too costly and that is where this supplementary feed comes in lemna minor and according to my personal research that I did, this lemna minor contains about 45% crude protein. That means it's a very good source of feed for our fish. So bro, I'm seeing tomato. Why tomato? On the <laughs> farm? Yes, right now we are at our tomato farm section. And it starts from there and down to our archery. And the idea behind this is um, a campaign against um, food scarcity. We are campaigning towards food security because as it is right now, we are at the edge of um, running into uh, food, scarcity. food scarcity so we need to do more we need to plant what we eat and also there's a particular uh, system that support that in our sector in, in the aquaculture sector okay. which is what we call integrated fish farming okay now this is when we use our waste water from the pond on the farm on the farm products how, why, how? now instead of using normal water okay for our plantings, we used waste water from the pond. That means the water that we that we that, that we drain out from the pond are supposed to go out. We did not allow them to go just like that to be a waste, mm. because they, we are campaigning against zero waste. 
<laughs> yes, we are campaigning against zero, zero waste. waste. So, yes. So all those waters now, we we pack them and then we use them on our tomato farms how, here. Like how do you use it? Now, we it, now at this tomato stage, we have different stages. During the wetting, we use our pond water to wet to them. Wet okay. Yes. And that pond water, it contains the ammonia. Okay. And because it's part of the our uh, fish uh, waste and ammonia is good. For it plants. contains um, certain nutrients for plants. It 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 changes and that's why we use animal waste, cow waste, cow dung, poultry yeah. waste, and that's instead of that, that, we are using our fish pond water, waste. fish yeah. waste. So that, that means uh, uh, this, this is another section. This is another section why on the farm. Fish is another section. It's another section on the farm. Wow. So how big is the uh, tomato farm? Here? Yes, it, this tomato farm started July first this year. Okay. Yes, it started July first, and this is this particular one we are seeing right here we planted this one july 1st and we've sold multiples that has in less than uh, in less than three months, three months. It's yes it's in less than three months and the seeds are very very hard i mean can, they are can I, can I touch? yes you can touch it they are very very hard oh, it's very, very hard. and they are very sweet i i don't know if you if you take them i would have plucked one for you to take but I, they are I like to consume them now. to consume right raw like that. I can do that. So yeah. Because, uh, let's 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 check for the one that is ripe enough so that we can see. Um, I said something earlier about zero waste, and we, like I said earlier, we love what we do and we are doing what we love. We are not just saying it with mouth. We are practicalizing it. And a typical example and a real life example is this scaffold over here where we make use of tires, the condemned tires to make scaffold. Instead of making the bricks and uh, the normal scaffold that we are used to, we make use of the condemned tire to make a scaffold for our storex to supply water to these snail farms. It's not functioning yet, but in the next few few months, what it is snail farms. Snail farms, yes. Snail. Yes, it's snail farms. And then this is what we call um, the greenhouse. This is our greenhouse here, yeah. but it's not. it doesn't start functioning yet, but it will start very soon. Hmm. Yes, this is our green. As you can see, the demarcation, it has been erected, but we just need some things to be put in place before we start it. So this is our green house. Yeah. This is the processing center of the farm and is managed by the MD's wife. Okay. That's Mrs. Mosmola and that's Mosnery Foods. So now at this processing center, we add values to our fish, to our fish produce. That means all the fish being cultivated at the grow out section, they bring it down here. For okay, that, that's if you don't want to sell. Like if you don't want to, to sell, sell live cut, live fish, okay. you bring it down here for processing. So we process it into different derivatives. You have the small and uh, the folded run, the fillet. We have the uh, kilishi, we have cracker, fish cracker, fish kilishi, we have fish kopai, fish chin chin. There are lots, there are over 20 derivatives mm. of fish, um, of fish uh, products. Uh, and products. Yeah. So this is another part, another section of our farm, and this is the sports center. We call this place the sports center, and this is where we have all of our activities, all of our sport activities, every Fridays and Saturdays. And you might even want to ask, why sports center on your farm? And this is because the whole idea behind this is because we want agriculture to be more robust, more attractive to everybody. And that is why we, 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 are, we are saying that we can be fit. I mean, we can be fit physically, even the fact that we are doing farm work. And that is why after all the farm activities from Monday to Fridays, at the evening, we have our sport activities, Saturdays and Fridays. And we have volleyball, we have basketball, we have football, and we have the indoor games, Scrabble, chess, and the likes. Everything they are here at, at this our sports center. So basically, adding more fun to farming. But like, all work, no play makes ja, uh, farmers, exactly. eight, eight people. All exactly. <laughs> work, no play make farmers, door farmers. Uh, you guess. <laughs> but we want it to be more interesting, more attractive. Like you see farming system and be, oh wow, I want to go into farming. It's not like making the, the business more enticing. Exactly, more everybody. enticing, yeah. exactly, yes. So guys, we are at the business center for this farm. So let's learn what happens there from my friend. Yeah, um, yeah we are at the training center and this is where most of our classroom activities take, um, carry, have been carried out. And this is where we have the theory classes and then we have another section here too. 
which is the kitchen too. We have kitchen here. Then another part that we have the MD service is here actually. The MD service is here. So now the idea behind this is we want to go beyond the farm activities. We want to gain the theoretical aspect. Maybe we want to know about the feed formulation, we want to know about the breeding, the pro reproduction, we want to know any of the aspects, ponds construction, any of the aspects related to agriculture or farming. This center is where we take the lectures on. So we have the first, this is our first hall, the hall in my front here, this is our first hall, and then this place is our proposed um, office for the museum center. Yes, we have the museum at the sports center, the inside, where we are unable to check inside for the museum, but we are planning on moving down the museum here. And this is because we want aquaculture, fish farming business to be more attractive, to be more engaging and more interactive, that even when you see it, you fall in love with it. And for research purposes, and that is the, why we want to set up a museum here. This is another facility of ours at Search Farms. And this is our hostel facility. And right here we have four different flats that contains two bedrooms each, right inside this apartment. So this is where we host our visitors, our students too. At times, yes, our students are even here right now. So, but they are on the farm. That's why nobody is inside right now. So this is an hostel fa um, facility for both our visitors and the intense students because here at Search Farms, we accept instant students too for their industrial training. So we have this place too. As this is not the only apartment, the only accommodation that we have. We have about two or three more at different locations too, but this is the one that is close to our training center. Guys, uh, with all you've seen on Search Farm, you agree, with me, you, you agree with me that these guys are in for a very big thing. Exactly. And the opportunity there is enormous for you, for every other person who is watching. Actually, I didn't come, this, this is not a, a paid advert or anything. I only came to investigate or to see what Search Farm is all about. And coming here, for me, it's more like a discovery you get. So they have opportunities where you can actually, inv you can actually invest at Search Farm. Yes. Yeah. So bro, can you tell us more about investment opportunities there? Yes. Um like I said earlier, there are different types of investments. We have the passive one, the active one, and the financial one. Can you make it brief? Yes. The passive is you come, you just rent the pond, and then you do the everything yourself. But the passive is you rent the pond, then you stock it, then you be the one to take care of it for yourself. And then the financial aspect is okay, you have the money, but you don't have the time. I don't want to go through the stress. But you don't, then you invest with your money, like you invest your money with us, and then after a year, and like every year rather, you receive 20% ROI, and which there are legal documentation for everything. There's an MOU for everything. So that is how the investment part of the business is being done. So guys, as a, as a creator, who cares about my audience? And who cares about, you know, your, your safety? I told them that I love this part of, 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 of this uh, the proposal and part of the business. So I will come back to Search Farm to Inter to interact with the executives, the MD, the brain behind this project. So he yes. will also give us an insight and also so hear from the horse's mouth if this is an investment opportunity you can actually benefit from. So let me know in the comment section the questions you would like to ask the MD, things you want to know about Search Farm with all I've shown you so far as per investment. What, what, what are the things that you want to know about Search Farm? Let us know in the comment section and I'll consider them Coming back to Search Farm to explore the opportunities Search Farm is offering all of us. So before then, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow the boy for more updates like this. I'm Hi. Okay. And uh, this, is, this is Sunday. Yes, my name is Sunday Adegbite and... <laughs>